Thank you, thank you. Thanks for all the love, man. That's the thing. I just I want all of y'all to know y'all not a friend in New Orleans. I'm telling you, if you ever in my part of the world, you email me or get in touch with me, say, hey, I saw you in Manchester, then you're gonna have the best tour guide ever. I'm taking you everywhere. The good places and the bad places. <laughs> Maybe I ain't gonna take you by T Ray House. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> uh, I'll leave that one out. <laughs> But before I do this next poem, before I get started with this next poem, I wanna, um, I don't know how much you guys know about New Orleans, but it's a crazy place, right? And, um, and if you get there, you'd be like, wow, this place is really different if you know the history of New Orleans and you know that it had no choice but to be different. And it's because of all of the different influences that came there, right? Like most people just think of the French, but like, uh, like Greville and I, we know the guy who wrote this book called The World That Made New Orleans, Ned Sublet. And he said that it was really the Spanish that gave it government, gave it structure. So you got the French, you got the Spanish, you got the Africans. While it was under Spanish control, there was a serious relationship between there and Havana. When, um, when after the, the, the slave revolt in Haiti, when it was San Domingue, all of those people left Haiti and went to Cuba. But seven years later, they had to leave. And then they came to New Orleans. And this is around 1810. Then the population of the city doubled. So you got French, Spanish, Cubans, Haitians, um, um, Africans. And then, after the Louisiana Purchase, it was the Americans, right? Because before then, it wasn't, it wasn't Americans in, in there until about like ar around 1810. So that's another influence. So because you got all of these cultures clashing into each other, you got these different sort of cultural expressions that, that grew from that place. Jazz music is one of them. Um, but then there's, there's one thing that people don't know so much about. They got this thing called Mardi Gras Indians. And it's African Americans who mask as Native Americans, right? And it's not so, something that's done in a mocking way. It's something that people, with, that's done with reverence. And, and the people who do it, they take it very, very, very seriously. We don't know how long it's been going on, but it's been going on for about 150 years. And so, like, we're gonna try to do this right here, just to give you a little idea of how it is, but you know, you gotta be like on 2nd and Drive Street in New Orleans, like right before Mardi Gras, a place that's like packed and everybody's sweaty and singing and chatting. And, uh, <clears throat> and so here's one of the, the popular ones we do. And my man, just a band, they're gonna help me out a little bit. Never plan, we 
don't fear the water, we must coexist with it. The usual slant on living is inverted. Across from Jackson Square, the Mississippi flows north and downstream concurrently. Cuche Male! That's what the Indians say. We're gonna find us the prettiest big chief on St. Joseph Day. And I love it when you call my Indian African Americans, masculines, Native Americans on an Italian American holiday. We go two way, pocket way, we go who not Native.
dances. One spider can execute a singular dance move that will require the legs of four men. Spider webs are coded dance patterns. Some sneaky hieroglyphics expert probably decoded a spider web to figure out how to do the boogaloo. Since they've never been given credit, spiders have been pissed ever since. Humans have arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. Spiders have humophobia, the fear of two-legged plagiarists. Flight between the earth and sky. The horizon is in a constant state of horizontal levitation, like a magic carpet. The horizon is the act that represents the unknown. It is the North Star of the curious. The imagination's kicking the ass. If necessity is the mother of invention, then desire is the relentless father. The necessity to sail the ocean was born out of the desire to touch the horizon. Same men have trekked across hostile deserts to sip her tea, taste her fruit, and locate the source of our magic. A flock of robin were the first to paint the town red. From the moment the great watchmaker glued on his first set of feathers, birds have been composing a soundtrack of the world. They are articulating melodies of liberation. They flap their wings and ride the back of the wind. They're the priest amongst us. They have no songs of war, and they never sing the blues. Thank you very, very much. All right, I, this next one I, I wrote.